Hello, good morning and good evening, my friends and co-seekers on the spiritual path. So today's subject is dying while living. So what is dying? What do we combine with the word dying? Dying means to lose one's life in the normal, common kind of word. But we are convinced that dying is no final process from the spiritual side of you. The body is dying. Yes. But the soul is living on. Dying while living. And what is living? Living means, from the spiritual side of you, living in any kind of body. in the physical, the astral, or the causerine realms. For us, this is living. So, this show, that shows that dying as well as living are just a few time periods, short periods, for us maybe long periods if we are young still. But in reality, if we look from the universe unto us, it is one point in the space and time. Then what means dying while living? It means to realize what comes after life, what comes after death, both. It means combining dying and living. The soul lives on. The coats it has put on, they may die, but the soul is living and while living it has the chance to meet somebody who has experienced the form of eternal life without body or free of any body, free to take on any body it or he or she likes. This, let me call it super soul, comes onto this world in different forms. But it is the same power, the same soul, just with another coat on. We call them masters or saints or spiritual teachers of the highest order. So, uh, I'm quoting and reading some parts of philosophy of the Masters, this very, very grand book, which was published with the great Master Savan Singh's blessing. 
So, it says here in the fourth chapter, death is real, but life in this world is unreal. And the Bible says, dust thou art, and to dust returns. So, what is death? Do we feel any pain at the time of death? In the Bhagavad Gita, there is a statement to the effect that the pain of death is so acute that it is equivalent to being stung simultaneously by a hundred thousand scorpions. The sting of one scorpion is already exceedingly painful. And also the Quran says, the pain of death may be likened to a thorny shrub passed into the body. In the six scriptures also there are references to the pain of death. But, It continues, one of the benefits of the teachings of the saints is that a disciple crosses the gate of death in a state of happiness and thus conquers it. This is the experience of all disciples who have been blessed with the Master's grace. So, So let us see. On the one side it says it is a very painful process. On the other side it is an experience of happiness and we con can conquer it. So what is the explanation for this seemingly contradiction? I think Only when we are not prepared to die while living, having the same experiences as at the time of death, in a portioned kind of way, in small part, steps, then in that case, with the guidance of a spiritual master, we can get out of the body and therefore die without pain. Yet, to continue, for the journey after death, which hangs over our heads like the sword of Damocles and which we all must undertake in due course, We normally care with very little. Have we arranged for food, which is nam or shabt, for this journey? Have we decided upon a guide or a master, guru, who has personal knowledge and experiences to accompany us? So here is uh, this proverb of this word of Damocles. So let me explain a little. It is a, an old Greek saga. And uh, at that time there was a king on Sicily and he ruled Sicily. It was a Greek king at that time, several hundred years before Christ. And uh, Damocles was a minister of the king of Syracuse of, in Sicily. He was so in love with his king that he praised him all over and seemed that he would be 
the most happy man of the world. The king, he was a little bit disturbed by that praising and thought, my God, how can I uh, get him, this Damocles, to his senses? So he had an idea. He wanted to change the place with Damocles and get him on the throne. But before that, he attached a very heavy sword directly above the throne and it was fixed only by a hair of a horse tail. One tail, one hair of a horse, horse tail only. So, when Damocles sat on this throne, he realized every second this sword could fall onto him and nobody could say when. Thus, the king of Syracuse could get sense into Damocles that especially as a king danger is everywhere and happiness will not take long to stay. Therefore you are speaking about the sword of Damocles. And this hangs over our heads, giving us our death whenever it is destined for us. So, I want uh, to re recall and uh, to t tell you about of a happening of a dear friend of mine when he was a child. Uh, he was operated on the tonsils, which were inflamed, and he got an anesthesia. And he told me, when I had this anesthesia, I suddenly realized I was above my body, and I could see what, what the doctor was doing with me. I saw that I was bleeding very heavily. But it was not a feeling of horror for me, he said, but a feeling of lightness, of light and lightness. Of course, he returned to his body after this experience and uh, he only did not tell it to his parents, but to me. So, we will see later how this can be explained. He had no pain when he left the body, but he returned, of course. So, let us see what the Greek philosopher Plutarch described what the state is of this, the me, me, of a man at this time of death, because he himself had to undergo death. At the moment of death, the soul experiences the same impressions and passes through the same processes as are experienced by those who are initiated into the great mysteries. Those who follow the instructions of a true master die daily while living. They go into the regions above and they come back into the same physical body at will. So in this first mentioned sentence of Plutarch, we can understand and realize he might have been a great master of his time in Greek.
then when we refer to the Bible, the difference is only this, that his connection with the physical body is not completely broken. There is a silver cord referred to in the Bible in Ecclesiastes 12.6 by means of which one can leave the body and return to it at will and be at all times connected with the body. In this manner he gets an insight into death while living. He travels in the astral, the causal and the higher regions and becomes fully familiar with them. He is able to meet and talk with the inhabitants of these regions. Ecclesiastes, which was uh, some sentence from the King Salomo, there you read it clearly. Now I quote, Remember him before the silver cord is severed and the golden bowl is broken before the pitcher is shattered at the spring and the wheel broken at the well. This philosopher, maybe also a master Salomo, he knew about the silver cord and he knew that one should learn about it before all wealth, the golden bowl, will be lost forever. And before the wheel is broken, his karmic load for this life has ended. Similarly, now I read again from Philosophy of the Masters, Gurmat Sidan. Similarly, Maulana, Maulana Rumi says, it is not death that will take you, it is a tomb. Death is a change that will usher you into light from darkness and bestow eternal bliss upon you. You need have no fear of death, for apart from the physical body, you have other bodies. Therefore, do not be afraid to come out of this body. And Christ says, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. By Simran and Dayan, the soul collects and enters the tenth gate. By listening to the Shabdun, it comes out, drawn upwards by the Shabd's magnetic force. With these practices, it is impossible to leave. Without these practices, it is impossible to leave this pot of clay. No other method exists. Guru Arjan says, dying while living can be accomplished only through Guru's Shabd. Guru's Shabd, the Shabdun, this is the one which let us die while living, no other way. Let us hear what our dear Ishwaji had uh, ta talked about this subject. It is from some transcript of the collection in Ishwa News. So he says, We feel the body is ourself. This body will die one day. We are afraid of death that will end then. What will happen to us? We have no realization at all. The body is a very temporary experience and the body will die. It is only a short-term arrangement made by the consciousness itself. That is why when we use the sound for drawing ourselves, I have recommended to my friends, take it easy, go slow. 
Do not try to leap too fast. I remember my own dad, who was a disciple of great master Savan Singh. When he was very keen to find the true truth inside, and when his attention was pulled by the sound, he felt he was dying and he had some fear. Actually, the awareness of the body comes up the same way, like when we die. When we die, we know that the arms and hands and arms and legs and feet, they die first. We become unaware of them first. Then the torso is unknown to us from the bottom to the top. When the attention is pulled by the sound, the same thing happens. Our attention is withdrawn from the body rapidly and we feel we are dying. So therefore, the fear of death is so strong in us because we think it's the end of our entire existence and of our entity that we will no longer be there at all. And that is why the fear of death prevents us from going too fast towards our own self. He, my dad, When he got that experience, he was so frightened and he said, I am not going to do any more meditation. This is like committing suicide. So we went back to the great master and said, Master, what kind of initiation have you given me? What kind of method have you taught me? It kills. It kills the person. I almost died. So... Great Master said, Likraj, shall I give you some stati statistics? People can die at any time. People die while they are reading a newspaper. People die while holding a cup in their hand before they can take a sip. People die in their sleep. People are dying in every state of being. Have you ever heard of a death taking place in meditation? Not a single case has been reported. Now understand that meditation prevents death from coming while you are meditating. It's a remarkable thing. So one does not die. The experience of death you had that you are going to die is a good experience. What does Guru Nanak say? What does Kabir say? What do all saints say? Die while living. They say, the real spiritual path is to die while living. Experience what death would be like while you are still living. You will still live, but you will have the experience of what happens when you die. It is a very useful experience, because you will not be afraid of death after that. You will know what dying means. You will know you don't actually die. It's only the body that dies. The body you become unaware of. The body, you leave the body, but you are not dead. So therefore don't worry too much. My dad says, I understand statistics. I don't know if they will apply to me. I'm still afraid. Then great master replied, What will happen, supposing you actually die? What do you expect? He said, I expect you to be there. He said, I will be there. Is that giving you some consolation? And he said, yes, that makes me feel a little better, that you will be there to take care of me. But he said, the great master said, still, I advise you, don't rush through. Do a little step at a time. Let your hand and feet die first and you get up from meditation. Let your arms die, legs die, then you get up. Meditate in stages so you get used to the withdrawal of attention from different parts of your body and that will take away your fear also. The same thing I'm recommending to everybody now, 
because people have similar experiences like my dad had. So, friends and followers of the path, I thank you very much for your, for your attention and I thank you that you, if you will take something in from what the masters here, from the old, and from Ishwaji had said, it will be good for you and for the others who come after you. I say goodbye to you now. Thank you for the Seva Master that you gave to me. Bye bye. Hello. Good morning and good evening, my friends and co-seekers on the spiritual path. So today's subject is dying while living. So what is dying? What do we combine with the word dying? Dying means to lose one's life in the normal, common kind of word. But we are convinced that dying is no final process from the spiritual side of you. The body is dying. Yes, but the soul is living on, dying while living. And what is living? Living means, from the spiritual side of you, living in any kind of body. in the physical, the astral, or the causerine realms. For us, this is living. So, this show, that shows that dying as well as living are just a few time periods, short periods, for us maybe long periods if we are young still. But in reality, if we look from the universe unto us, it is one point in the space and time. Then what means dying while living? It means to realize what comes after life, what comes after death, both. It means combining dying and living. The soul lives on. The coats it has put on, they may die, but the soul is living and while living it has the chance to meet somebody who has experienced the form of eternal life without body or 
free of anybody, free to take on anybody, it or he or she likes. This, let me call it super soul, comes onto this world in different forms. But it is the same power, the same soul, just with another coat on. We call them masters or saints or spiritual teachers of the highest order. So, uh, I'm quoting and reading some parts of philosophy of the masters. This very, very grand book, which was published with the great master Savan Singh's blessing. So, it says here in the fourth chapter, death is real. But life in this world is unreal. And the Bible says, Dust thou art, and to dust returns. So, what is death? Do we feel any pain at the time of death? In the Bhagavad Gita, there is a statement to the effect that the pain of 